You know, I mentioned in my opening remarks, the champion plan is not about statistics, it's about people. And it's about not just individuals, because every person who walks through here is someone's son, daughter, sister, brother, mother, father. Um, but also the fact that I think that to really explain to you what the champion plan can mean in someone's life, uh, I'm not capable of doing that. Uh, not not very well, anyhow. So we, um, we've we invited uh, Jonathan to come up and share his story with you. Uh, he is uh, celebrating over two years of sobriety. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Jonathan. And I think Jonathan is just one example, but when you meet Jonathan, you'll wonder, you'll, you'll realize why we all keep showing up to make this work every day. So Jonathan, come on up. Oh, I am so nervous to be up there. Uh, okay. Well, first, I, I have to thank the Champion Plan and the Mayor for all they've done. You know, um, just to give you some background on myself, um, I'm coming to LHI, which is now. Oh. Jonathan's a lot taller than I am. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> I shrink. <laughs> I just want to make sure everyone can get you. Um, well, just to give you some background on myself, I've been coming to what is now known as Stairway to Recovery, which was LHI when I first walked through these doors. You know. um, it's where I got my start in my recovery, and I, I was able to come to the acknowledgement that I'm not alone in my struggles. <laughs> a little over two years ago, I walked into the police station on a Sunday and asked for help. And, oh, give me a second, to ask for help because I had reached a place that scared me and wasn't sure how to go about. And Miss Peg came over to get me right before Stairway was getting ready to close. But that didn't matter to this amazing woman. She spent the next few hours trying to find me a bed. And by the grace of God, she did. But I wasn't ready yet. A, later, a year later, I made my way back here again. But this time, I thought I would stay. But once again, I did not. But that didn't stop the amazing team here from checking in on me. Through phone calls, texts, it didn't matter. They found ways to reach me. And if they couldn't reach me, they reached out to my family to try and help me that way. Then I got clean for a little bit, and I fell back off. And they were there once again to help. But I wasn't ready yet. And that's how I became a participant in Brockton's Drug Court. And they were there through all of that. And now I have over two years clean. And I still come in to check in and give them updates on my, you know, what I'm doing, what's going on, just to ask for help sometimes. And just to come in occasionally to get a pat on my back, because we need that. You know, and they're there all the time to remind me of my accomplishments and how proud they are of me. And I am thankful every day for this program and the things they've done for me and the people they've introduced me to. Like, there are so many people in this room that have been an effective a part of my recovery. From Bamsey, from the mayor's office, stairway. I've been through so many different programs and facilities and learned that there are actual people out here who aren't my family who care about me. And that's something we struggle with in our addiction when we're out there. You know, we know our families are supposed to care about us, but we don't realize there are other people in this world that care as well. And the fact that they're still here in my corner years later, no matter the things I've done and haven't done, they stand by me, even though I'm years past the program dates, they still call and check on me because they truly care. And that's what these programs are meant to do. And I can only thank you guys so much.